Welcome to the testing world. In this session, I'm going to explain bug life cycle. First of all, we need to understand what do you mean by the bug life cycle. While doing software testing, if I find any bug, we are going to report this bug into any bug reporting tool like Jira, Bugzilla, Mentis. So when we report any bug into these tools, reporting means we are filling the information of the bug into the tool so that anybody can see it and do actions on that. Means if it is a developer, he will understand the bug, he will try to fix it. If it is a manager, so manager can check like how many bugs we are having, what is the impact of this bug. So we are reporting our bug to any bug reporting tool. So when we report any bug to the bug reporting tool, from this point the bug is started. A point will come when the bug is going to be closed means this bug is fixed by developer and verified by the QA. At that time bug is going to be closed. All the actions and the stages which comes in the cycle like from bug is started and bug is terminated. The whole process is called bug life cycle means from the point bug is started and the point where bug is terminated or I will say closed. So that's a standard bug cycle we need to understand. First of all, I'm just coming here on the new. As a tester, I'm doing testing and I found a bug in the application. So if I take an example, I'm moving to application which is shop.thetestingworld.com. I need to test this. For testing this, uh, I'm testing the search functionality of this application. So I'm searching like iPhone, okay? So now I'm searching iPhone and as expected, I should get three results. But if I check here, we are getting only one result. Means this search functionality is, is not working as expected. So it's a bug. Whenever you find any bug, we are going to report that bug into bug reporting tool. When we report any bug to the bug reporting tool, the first status would be new. Means it's a new bug. So when a new bug is created by the tester, status would be new. Now the second point is, as per the standards, whatever the bug which is reported by any tester, lead of the testing team will have to verify that. I am working as a lead, so whatever the bug which is reported by my team members, I will verify this bug is correct or not. And I found it, it's a valid bug. So I will set the status open. So here, here my tester is working, who is reporting that bug, here as a lead. I am verifying the bug is correct or not. If correct, I will set it open. Now next, as a testing team, our task is done. Now from here, the task of development team will be started. So now as a development lead, I check how many bugs we are having which are open. So this bug will come into the picture. Developer lead will assign this bug to any developer. Once the bug or defect is assigned to any developer, the status would be assigned. Now, bug is assigned to the developer. So this bug is in the bucket of developer. Now, developer will start working on that bug. So, as a tester, I say it's a bug. But developer will also verify it is a correct bug or not. So here we have the multiple options. Now the bug is assigned to the developer. Developer has multiple options. So now, first of all, as a developer, as a developer, I'm going there and checking, is it really a bug? Okay, as a developer, I go to the application, I check it. I found, as expected, I should get only one result because in my database, as of now, we have only one iPhone. Means, means it's not a bug. For whatever the reason, developer is not accepting that bug. It might be the first reason that it is not a valid bug or the developer is not able to replicate your bug. For whatever the reason, if developer is not accepting it is a bug, in that case, developer will set it rejected. Developer will reject your bug. So if developer don't accept that bug, mark it rejected. Second, as a developer, I try to replicate that bug and yes, I found it seems to be a bug because we should get at least three iPhones over here. I'm agreed that that's a bug, but as of now, I'm working somewhere else. 
I'm working some on some other important task. As of now, I cannot work on this. So in that case, I'll mark it deferred. Deferred means yes, as a developer, I'm accepting it's a bug, but for whatever the reason, I'm not working on it as of now. I'm just deferring it for the later. If this bug cannot be fixed as of now, reason could be anything. Might be uh, it belongs to the third party tool. Third party tool means any tool which we are using here in my application, internal other application which I'm using in my current application. That could be one reason. Or bug, we can ignore it as of now because when the new functionality will develop, this bug will automatically fix. So for whatever the reason, I'm accepting it's a bug, but I'm not sorting out this bug. I'll set up status deferred. So that will be done by developer. So we have seen rejected, we have seen deferred. Now the third point is, yes, as a developer, I try to replicate that bug. Yes, I'm able to replicate it. And yes, I accept it. It's a bug. I'm going to work on it. Means I'm going to fix that bug. So now developer will go to the code, will make required changes. And once the bug is fixed, developer will mark it fixed. So now here the developer task is done because developer has completed his bug and mark this bug as fixed. Next, when developer mark any bug fixed, we'll get the information, okay, this bug is fixed. You will get this fix in the next build. As a tester, we got a new build. Now I need to verify that bug is fixed or not. When we verify and I found this bug is still persist, this is still not fixed. In that case, I will reopen that bug. But when you reopen that bug, try to give as much information as possible. Means we will give the new screenshot, we will give updated data. So whatever the maximum information you can put with the bug, you have to put it while reopening. Now, once the bug is reopened, it is again assigned to developer by the development lead. And again, the same process, rejected, deferred or fixed. Second, developer fixed that bug. As a tester, we got the build. I'm testing this bug is fixed or not. So if this bug is fixed, I'll set it verify. Now my lead will verify it one more time. As a tester, I have verified. So I'll mention verified. But as a standard, my lead will verify it one more time. And if it is verified, like it is really closed, lead will close it. So that's a standard bug life cycle. But we are going to face few interview questions over here. So I'm going to explain th these interview questions. First, do you follow this bug life cycle? Answer is yes, but not completely. I have seen in practical, we are not following this open and verified stage. Why? Because in real, if as a tester, I have reported a bug. So that's a final. Now it will go directly to the developer. My lead will not verify it. it's a correct or not. Because as a tester, it's my responsibility to verify it again before reporting a defect. So if I'm reporting a bug or defect, means it will be a valid defect, my lead will not verify it again. In the same way, if developer fix that bug, status is fixed. As a tester, I'm checking the bug is fixed or not. And if it is fixed, I'll directly make it close. I'll not set it verified. So here, this open and verified stage is not used when we are working on the real-time applications. Next is deferred. What will you do if developer deferred your bug? If developer deferred my bug, I cannot do anything. Because if developer deferred that bug, means developer accepted it's a bug, but it's not going to fix it. So whenever developer deferred any bug, he or she will put comments on the bug. Means we are using any bug reporting tool. There will we will have a comment section. Whenever he is deferring, he will put the comments over there. So as a tester, I can just go and check the comments. Okay, for whatever the valid reason, he put the comment. If I'm satisfied with the reason, I'll not do anything in that. If developer is not giving any valid comment, so it's not my responsibility to check it. It's the responsibility of development lead to check it, why this bug is not fixed or why this bug is deferred. So we as a tester 
are not bothered about why he is deferred but in few cases when you think this bug is very important need to be fixed as soon as possible in that kind of cases we can do a follow up follow up could be in our stand up calls which is followed in the agile or through the emails so we can follow up but it's not mandatory now the next and most important question is what will you do if developer rejected your bug so developer is rejecting my bug so here we can have two conditions one my bug is not valid developer find out and it's not a valid bug he just rejected once he rejected i verified again and yes it was my mistake i was not following the correct steps or i'll say i was not following the correct requirement and i accept that's not a valid bug so if developer rejected my bug and that's not a valid bug i'll definitely close it with my proper comments but the second and the most important case is if developer rejected your bug and you are thinking that's a valid bug so if developer rejected my bug and i think it's a valid bug but still rejected so once rejected i'll verify that bug again when you're verifying that bug if you find that this is a valid bug and for whatever the reason rejected by the developer i'll reopen that bug and will try to provide as much information as possible you can record your scenario you can attach with the bug you can take screenshots you can attach updated client requirements you can provide whatever the maximum information which is possible with the bug so that developer can understand that bug and will able to replicate it so we have reopened that bug with maximum possible information now again this bug will go to the developer assigned to the de developer again developer is verifying uh, looking my information looking at my information but still developer is not convinced and he again rejected my bug so second time it is rejected but if the second time your bug is rejected you still think this is a valid bug in that case if i reopen that bug it will go to the assigned and then uh, you know it will be cyclic way like rejected reopen rejected reopen so first time when the bug is rejected we are reopening it but second time if it is rejected and you are confirm it's a valid defect or i'll say valid bug in that case i'll call a meeting me developer my lead development lead and manager it could be a small meeting of 15 minutes only i'll show my bug to the team or i'll say to everyone in the meeting now let the manager decide what will happen with this bug in 90 99% cases manager will ask developer to try to replicate this bug if he is not able to replicate he will come to your system he will check it in your system it might be possible he is not able to reproduce that bug on his own system so in that case he will ask you to show on your system try to replicate there try to find out the solution over there but if i take a 1% example in which manager asked me no it's not a valid bug close it now i i have explained that but still not manager is not convinced it's not a bug you just close it because we got the instruction so we have to do it i'll definitely close that bug but whenever we are closing that bug we'll put the comments why we are closing it so as per the direction of the superior i'm just closing this issue we are putting the comments over there like as per the direction of the manager or as the superior i'll just close the, i'm just closing this issue the point is we as a tester are not convinced but still because we have to follow you know hierarchy i'll have to follow the whatever instruct by my manager so i'll close it but with the proper comment so that's the overall process or i'll say that that's a bug life cycle and i have already updated you what's a practical bug life cycle like what we are going to follow in real environment one more thing i want to update here as of now i have just given few names like rejected deferred assigned in different bug reporting tool these name could be different but process would be same so here we have seen what is bug life cycle that's all we have for the session thanks for watching this video